Good afternoon. I'm Audrey Tang, Taiwan's Digital Minister. It is a genuine honor and privilege to be invited to the World Movement for Democracies 11th Global Assembly in Taipei. As you are all undoubtedly aware, I was set to participate physically in the Assembly's first in-person edition since 2018 in Senegal. But my presence Thursday is required in the legislature to handle the budgetary matters for the Ministry of Digital Affairs. Scheduling clashes are regrettable, but this is the reality we must all come to terms with when serving the people and striving to satisfy the highest standards of good governance. Fortunately, we've arranged a Wednesday meeting with many of you, and rest assured, I will endeavor to make amends at the 12th edition of the Assembly if blessed with an invitation. Before sharing ideas with you on how Taiwan can help promote digital democracy, foster open innovation, and galvanize a global commitment to free the future, I wish first to thank Damon Wilson, President and CEO of the National Endowment for Democracy, to Ryota Jonin, Director of the World Movement for Democracy, to all the supporting staff, to our moderator, Josh Rogan, and fellow speakers, Arlene Donahoe, and my old Sadani. Your efforts, your passion, and your support of democracy and Taiwan are exemplary. Now, the world as we know it is at a crossroads. The COVID-19 and Russia's brutal war of aggression against Ukraine have altered the geopolitical landscape in such a way that authoritarian expansionism is emboldened to lay siege to our once seemingly impregnable fortresses of democracy. Indeed, a long shadow is again falling over the cherished shared values, providing security and prosperity for billions of people around the globe. As a force for good, sharing our resources and know-how with international partners from the four corners of the globe, Taiwan understands the critical importance of defending democracy. And the central plank in this approach involves fostering independent, civil society-led digital innovation through human-centered technology. It is imperative that we strengthen our pillars of participatory policymaking by connecting with all segments of society using digital era communications as well as safe and familiar platforms. Taiwan's successes in this regard span an array of areas. Several I wish to elaborate upon link to public digital infrastructures, to the impact of G0V or Gov0, to people-public-private partnerships, and to co-creation. You see, reliable infrastructure makes our lives safer and more convenient. And the public infrastructure in the digital realm does the same for democracy. Here in 2015, civic technologist invented Airbox. It's a low-cost air quality tracker. Now it is in a variety of places from schools to household balconies. Citizen science supplemented the public sector's limited capacity. It exemplified data stewardship and environmental education. In 2016, our government initiated the Civil IoT Taiwan program, the first time we classified those infrastructure budget in the digital realm as infrastructure. Originally, there were 2,000 airbox devices countrywide, and now there are tens of thousands. The next step after data sharing is forming shared goals through assistive intelligence. Uber's entry was largely welcome to Taiwan in 2015, but it did trigger taxi driver discontent. Again, with the assistance of the Gov0 or G0V community, the government utilized the POLIS system to help stakeholders discover areas of agreement. For example, safety, that's a shared value on which all parties concur. And the rough consensus or good enough consensus is that drivers need to have professional licenses, purchase insurance, 
and pay taxes, and these are all ratified in the Diversified Taxi Program for the following year. And POLIS also features in discussions among countries during, for example, the AIT American Institute in Taiwan's Digital Dialogues in 2019 and the COHAC Collaborative Coronavirus Hackathon in 2020. With a visualized spectrum of opinion, participants can plainly see where they stand, compare with others, and co-create this good enough consensus. By harnessing the limitless power of civil society's collective intelligence, we can build a workable foundation for how the government should approach very controversial topics. The secret is to learn with the people, to participate, to grow trust in all parts of the process by learning how to engage openly and positively while celebrating commonality and good enough consensus as opposed to getting lost in the thickets of conflict. Here, the participation officers embedded in each and every ministry are an instrumental part of the process. The participation officers are tasked with coordinating interagency collaboration and coordinating people-public-private dialogues. For example, after any proposal is initiated on join.gov.tw, a public policy participation platform established by the cabinet-level National Development Council, the officers will initiate the conversations across sectors to invite stakeholders joining on the e-petition to the face-to-face -face collaborative meetings for discussions on ways to incorporate those ideas into decision-making. And this empowers our younger generation, gives them an equal opportunity to craft policies despite being too young to vote in elections. So this intergenerational solidarity is a vital ingredient in our recipe for spurring effective, healthy, and inclusive online democracy and democratic deliberation. In addition to suggesting policies, the public, the private, and the social sectors can directly co-create through the exciting Presidential Hackathon Initiative. Since its launch in 2018, this annual event has paved the way for collaborating on the digital public infrastructures. Thousands of individuals, social entrepreneurs, civil servants, teams from dozens of countries, we have gathered together, worked together with five outstanding teams every year selected and awarded by the President, Dr. Tsai Ing-wen, upon conclusion of each annual edition. And the people-public-private partnerships, of course, become our flagship achievement after those co-creation, coordination. Many PPPP standouts emerged during the darkest days of coronavirus, including the mask map and the 1922 SMS contact tracing initiatives. Even though now the world is transitioning to the post-pandemic new life, they boast enormous potential for expanded borderless applications. I envision the PPPP model as one of the MODAS key platforms for international cooperation and tie-ups between Taiwan and all democracies, especially in the Indo-Pacific, as we set about answering the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres' call at the UNGA for the all-hands-on-deck approach to solving global challenges. Indeed, as a signatory to the Declaration for the Future of the Internet this April, along with 60 partners around the globe, Taiwan is committed to strengthen democracy, freedom, and human rights through PPPP. This commitment to building partnerships and deepening engagement is paying handsome dividends for the country and its 23.5 million people. By reinvigorating and revitalizing our democracy from the ground up, we are strengthening resilience in the face of external threats and showing those living under the yoke of authoritarianism that restrictions of civic freedom is not par for the cause. We are also showing that Taiwan's model of digital democracy is achievable, is sustainable, and most importantly, worthy of emulation. And in this undertaking, strengthening digital resilience plays a key role. The MODA, our ministry, was launched in August 
with plurality, the overarching vision. During our preparatory work, we concentrated on developing the core value of digital resilience for all. And this refers to the ability to respond and recover quickly from any adverse impact, learning from the experience of being attacked, and then strengthening ourselves. Case in point is our focus on preventing a repeat of a distributed denial of service attacks, cyber attacks, during US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's historic visit in August. At the time, we were subjected to the flood of foreign cyber attacks, with digital signage in malls outside train stations and convenience stores hacked with hateful messages. The experience proved educational and instructional, paving the way for a raft of cybersecurity system upgrades to be implemented. But fortunately, Taiwan possesses advanced IT industries and deep experience in disarming those cyber attacks. Building a trustworthy and stable supply chain based on our strong chip industry is now a top policy priority for all of us. And these assets dovetail with the democratic camp's efforts to overcome cybersecurity related obstacles. Made in Taiwan, or MIT, is now more than a guarantee of quality. It is a guarantee of trust. This double T definition is our country's international calling card of dependability. The moda understands that preparation is half the battle won, and those who would attempt to hollow out our democracy should keep one thought in mind that Taiwan is an island of resilience. Now, this brings me to the deeper question of how best to capitalize on our strengths and resilience while mobilizing collectively. As the COVID-19 and Russia's brutal war of aggression against Ukraine have demonstrated, the free world is only as strong as our weakest link. So it is time for a global movement to ensure we leave no one behind as per the theme of the assembly in claiming the democratic future and unifying voices for a new frontier. Here, I would like to propose free the future as our call to action. Free the future is a personally designed catchphrase encapsulating the MODA's core philosophy that nothing, nothing is set in stone and all possibilities can be realized with commitment, courage, self-belief, and vision. I also see free the future as a rallying cry for Taiwan and all responsible members of the international community to invest, like Taiwan does, in civic technologies to strengthen democracy. To give no trust is to get no trust. As democracies, we must trust our citizens. The truth of the matter is we are at a watershed moment in history. The onus is on each and every one of us to recognize the magnitude of this challenge and then act. As the tide of time and recent events have shown, democracy in all its shapes and forms still is the best way of safeguarding freedom for generations to come. Friends, thank you for listening and allowing me to contribute to today's conversation. Sincerely, I wish you live long and prosper.